Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make some very special, memorable, handmade gifts, uh, but not spend very much money at all on them. And I didn't get to film this, but I glued a piece of floral foam in the bottom of this little uh, milk jar. And I don't recommend using a milk jar. I did this uh, because uh, this is a picture of my mom that I cut out and glued onto a popsicle stick. I actually had to use two short ones because I didn't have a longer one. But um, I just glued this on there. I'm going to hide that back. But um, I just wanted just the form of her. And I'm going to stick that down in that floral foam. But as it turns out, I had... I, my foam was a little bit too high, so I ended up having to cut it down. I actually had to change this up on different um, in different areas because um, I was just kind of experimenting. I had never done one of these, so um, I put some um, Spanish moss in the bottom to cover the floral foam. And then uh, I had to just kind of work it around with my scissors. Again, I would... I uh, wouldn't recommend a milk jar. The reason I did a milk jar on this one is uh, because uh, my, some of my mother's memories as a child was uh, was um, living on a cattle farm or a, and they milked cows. That was one of her um, that was one of her special memories. So I thought this little jar this little milk jar would be perfect for this so the plan here is to stick that little popsicle stick down into um, the floral foam and and cover that floral foam with this moss so that's what I've done here but I'm also uh, going to be adding a tree behind her and that will hide the back and my mother loved climbing trees when she was little so we thought that would be appropriate so to make the tree i started with this little twig and i'm just going to glue some little pieces from an old pick and uh, put those on for leaves and make this like a little tree and i'm just going to hot glue those on because it's going to be inside this jar and you're not going to have a lot of wear and tear on it so I think that it will hold up just fine with the hot glue. And I'm sorry there's going to be a lot of um, background noise in this video, but I'm at the shop today, and this is the only opportunity I'm going to get to, to do my voiceover, and there's just a lot of work going on here today. So I'm just gluing these on uh, just where I feel like it will make it look more like a tree. And then I will stick that, uh, add a little bit of glue to the bottom of that, and stack that down in the floral foam right behind her. Again, this was very tedious to work with because of the shape of the bottle, and it was just really hard to get it in. But, um, but I just kind of stuck that in behind her and didn't do a whole lot else. I, I think I dropped a little rock in there uh, beside her and um and then just kept this one very simple and i just love how this one turned out um, and you could do this in just a regular size jar it would be so much easier and all i did was just tie some cheesecloth around the top and um this one just kind of says a lot about my mother's childhood because she was an outdoors an outdoorsy person and she loved to climb trees and so we just thought that was very appropriate for her so now this one is going to be a very simple one so I just put an old picture in there and that's mom beside the family vehicle uh, when she was little and all I'm doing is holding it to the front and I uh, actually chose a jar with a flat front uh, flat front and uh, something that didn't have any indentions on the front and just put that picture there and fill the jar with buttons and that presses that up against the front well and um, and makes a good little picture frame I guess you would call it so now I'm just going to put an old lid on this 
and then tie something around the top of this and I decided when I tied something around the front to add a, an old key and although it's not going to be a car key it just kind of I felt like was appropriate to put an old key on that because of the car there behind her. I don't know about you guys but um, the older I get, the more I want to give handmade gifts, and not just to save money, but especially uh, to give them something that they can hold on to for a long time and not get tired of, and something that actually means something to them. Now, the next one that I'm going to do is going to be an ornament, and I'm going to start with those clear, uh, the flat, round, clear ornaments from the Dollar Tree and you can get these different places uh, but the Dollar Tree is a very good source for them and I'm going to make an ornament using an old picture as well and to get that picture in there you just kind of roll it up and and then once you get it in there flatten it back out now I don't want the back of this picture to show so all I'm going to do to that is just stuff some lace back behind it and then this is what we're left with in the front. And once I get that lace straightened out, it's not the easiest. I probably should have used some needle nose pliers here. But uh, once I got that straightened out where it covered the whole back, now I'm just going to make some uh, shabby roses around the top. And if you've not seen me do this, I just take a strip of fabric or a strip of lace and tie a knot in the end and glue that knot to the center of where I want my rows to be. And then I just keep kind of twisting and gluing as I go. And you can change directions that you twist, uh, not the directions that you roll it up, obviously, but you, you can change the directions that you twist to add a little bit more dimension if you want. But you just keep gluing that around until you get your rows the size that you want it. And then when it's the size that you want it, all you do is just clip that off and, um, and secure that with some glue and your rose is finished. And then I just kept adding some more roses. And this one I think is made with some warm and natural that I have coffee stained. And that's just a quilt batting. And then I think I used a tea towel at some point. I only used lace at some point. And I just keep building more shabby roses and adding those all the way around it. And I'm not going in a complete circle. I want it to be a little bit irregular, but I want to hide those corners and, uh, and make it to where you won't see anything uh, of the frame of the picture. Now obviously these little ornaments that the Dollar Tree carries are plastic and you can get them in uh, glass, um, So, but this one is not and um, you have to be really careful with that and I got a little hot glue on the front and you have to be careful because you don't want to ruin your um, plastic. So obviously if, if you get the really hot glue on the front, it might do some melting of it. So you have to be careful with that. But even when you get some little strings on it, like I did, uh, it's a little harder to remove than if you were to get it on glass. And uh, I found that the best way to remove it is to put just a little bit of baby oil on a paper towel and uh, rub it off that way and you could also use olive oil or something like that if you don't have baby oil but that that worked for me so i just keep adding these around and as you can see some i've made out of lace ribbon and and this one is another one that i've made out of the warm and natural i like the warm and natural because it's uh, a little chunkier so it builds your rows quicker and makes a little chunkier rose, I think. Now, if you didn't want to go through all this, uh, I happen to like the cloth roses, and I felt like it needed that look here, but uh, if you wanted to uh, make clay roses, you could do that. 
You could use your air dry clay and do some sort of trim around it. Um, again, I just, I felt like these roses paired well with this and I felt like the fabric gave it more of a vintage look. Now, every now and then, uh, because like I said, I don't want this to be irregular or I don't want it to be regular actually. Uh, so I added a little bit more dimension to uh, areas and I did that by just stuffing a little piece of lace down in. This particular piece looked like a leaf to me so um, but I did that here and there. But other than a little bit of time I feel like this ornament is, is going to have probably the least material in it because the jars obviously going to have to either have those already or buy them but these are just very cheap i'm thinking you can get these two to a pack at the dollar tree and here i'm just adding some little beads to it here and there so i do that all the way around and then um and then the little hanger that comes on the top of it uh, i didn't show that here but um I painted it bronze colored and uh, to make it look more antique and then I went over it with some uh, gilding wax and um, just to make this look like an older ornament and then once I got all that covered then I just took a piece of vintage lace and tied around the neck of that and then this one was finished you can also add buttons on this uh, in with some of your roses. Um, that would be a pretty look also. Now, all these pictures have been my mother as a little girl, but the next one is going to be uh, one of my daughters. So, I did the same thing with hers. I just cut the picture out, and uh, because of the pose of the picture... Uh, I'm going to do a little bit different with this, and I am going to put it in a jar, and I'm going to use a water mouth jar, and as you see, can see, that I couldn't get her whole arm there, so I'm just going to hide that, but I like that that one little arm is uh, sticking out there with her hand on something, so I'm going to kind of work with that. Now, the way I'm going to be doing this one is using some sewing items and things like that, so I'm going to make a pin cushion out of this one. And uh, this would be a, a great gift for someone who does a lot of sewing uh, for them to uh, put in their sewing room or, uh, or anywhere for that matter. Just because they like to sew, uh, it just kind of makes a more personalized gift for them. So I had this little piece of a paint stick here and I'm going to just glue that onto the back to kind of sturdy this picture up. Again, that back is going to be hidden. And then I'm going to glue one of those little short popsicle sticks to the bottom so that I'll have something protruding down below to stick down into that floral foam. And I decided, since I was going to be doing this in sewing items, and um, that little hand is sticking up there like it needs to be propped on something, uh, then I'm going to take a little spool that one of my sweet viewers brought me and um, I'm going to have her resting her little hand on that spool. So I put the spool down in there first and then uh, and then I put her down in beside it uh, and let that popsicle stick stick down into that floral foam. And then all I did was just start sprinkling buttons down in there and let it fill in all that empty space around the bottom. So that helps sturdy her up some more and just kind of brings that theme down in. And then I had a little thimble uh, that actually when she was a little girl, she collected some thimbles. My mother started her little thimble collection and I put that down in there. I thought that would be perfect. Now I'm taking the toe, toe of the sock because this is going to be a um, pin cushion and I didn't have any little round disc so I decided to just use a little wood slice 
And I'm just going to stretch this with some polyfill over that and trim the excess and glue it to the bottom. So again, I just stretch it over here pretty tight and then trim the excess and, and glue that around. I actually glue it first and then trim the excess. And then to hide all the that unsightly on the bottom, I just take a little uh, small doily and glue to the bottom. There's just so many ideas uh, that if you want to give uh, homemade gifts and sentimental gifts, that um, just so many ideas uh, to do with that. And something that I think just about anybody would love to have. And my sister's always saying that um, we don't pass enough down to our children uh, for when we're gone. And I completely agree. And I'm actually going to um, add one of the uh, one of her ideas and a link to her video um, on some ways that you can pass that down to your children through little handmade gifts. So here I've just glued that little doily to the bottom, and now I'm gluing one to the top. And uh, actually, this is just one that I cut down, and. I'm just going to kind of glue it to cover the whole sock. And where those meet, I just kind of glue those together and cover that whole top. And it's really easy to get this to fit perfectly because, uh, because of that polyfill inside, you can kind of squish it down some. And because of uh, the doilies being kind of stretchy, uh, then you can make it fit pretty snug. But when I get the whole thing glued together, then I just kind of set it on top of that and I don't want it to come off. So, um, so then I just uh, glued a piece of lace all around the outside and left some hanging off so that I could glue that onto the rim of the jar. So you want a little bit wider lace here so that you've got room to glue it onto your pin cushion and then still room to uh, wrap it around the top of the jar. Now what I didn't have to add to this was um, some of those little scissors that come with a little uh, sewing repair kit those would have been perfect, I think, to maybe tie on to the outside of this jar or even stick down the inside. So now that I've got this all glued on, I'm just tying a little piece of vintage lace to the side and this will be finished. Now you could also add a hang tag to this. I think it just makes a really neat little gift. And again, especially for someone who likes to sew. And now I have some gorgeous hang tags to show. And this one is from Terry Rogers, who lives in Kansas. And I love this major scene. I think it's just absolutely beautiful with the jewel there as the star on the top. And she's even got some little, um, I guess this is Spanish moss or something, glued to the bottom for the hay. I think that's just so pretty. And again, this is wood. And I love the roping that she used there on the top. And uh, then this side has an equally beautiful nativity. And I love, love, love the colors on this. It's just so pretty. And there, uh, she has signed it on the top. Now, I love it when you guys do this because then later on when I go back to them, I know who wrote them. Sometimes I try to put a tag on the back of them so I'll remember, but I don't always remember. And so if you can sign them, even if you don't write your whole name, I know that you guys don't all want your names mentioned, but even when you don't, just write your first name on them and where you're from. So now my next tag is, actually she sent two tags. Uh, and this one, look how gorgeous this is. This is from Debbie from British Columbia. Now Debbie only, put her first name on that so I don't think that she 
wanted her name mentioned. I, I assume she didn't, but look at this. I love the church there. I love the font on Christmas and just the just the lace over the, so much detail. I just love this so much. And then the other side equally is beautiful. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, look at that stitching. I, I don't know if she did that or um, she bought it like that, but absolutely beautiful work. This is just gorgeous. So that was her first one. And then the second one is so pretty also. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, and she stitched this too around it. I love the stitching. I don't do that, but I just love it. But uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I think that the deer theme is going to be really big this year. Uh, I know that in my store, I've sold a lot of deer ornaments. And I think that old time Santa there is so neat. It's so pretty. She did such a good job. Both of you all did such a great job on these. But I also have a third person that sent some. So this one is from uh, this one is from Carrie. And Carrie just put her first name. So again, I don't want to mention her whole name. But Carrie is from Michigan. And again, a deer theme. And look at that zigzag stitching that she did. Uh, I love the little wooden tag that she added, and I love that she bagged it. Uh, and here's the other side of that. She put a mold on that. So, so pretty. You guys are so talented. And uh, the back, even though she didn't do much with the back, she did put a cardstock on there and made it very pretty. So, this is just amazing, amazing hang tags. Now I want to show y'all something else. This is another idea for a handmade gift. Uh, now my sister made this particular one, but what she and I are doing is uh, for each of our brothers and sisters, we're giving them a little, a little journal, uh, a little handmade journal. And these don't look it, but they're very simple to make. She has a video of start to finish of a mother's journal. And uh, and so you can just take the people in your family. This particular one, I we used the wood shapes here. I actually helped her with this one. She didn't make this one. We both made this one. But uh, these are the wood shapes from the Dollar Tree. And um, so we used those for the front and back on this one. But this one is for my brother and sister-in-law because they just started keeping chickens. And so... We just did this so they could put make a little log of how um, how everything was going when they mold. We're going through their molting process. She can write the names of her chickens, or they can. And so here you would write the breed and and then um, the name on it and keep track of the ones that you have. They're going to start small, so this will work for them. And uh, how many eggs you got on each day. Uh, but you can just do a number of things. You can do some blank pages like this so that they can journal different things. And here was a little recipe in that recipe book that I've been working from uh, that has eggs in the recipe. So we just thought that would be good to add to that. And she just added these little things here in case they want to add some pictures and things like that. Uh, and there's to keep up with their medical log and all that. Uh, so that's one. I'm going to show you different ones here. Uh, just to give you some ideas on different things that you can do. So this one is, uh, this one is going to be for, we're doing this for my brothers and sisters. But this is actually for my uncle who was really close to mom. Uh, so his is going to be a prayer journal because he is a prayer warrior. And uh, so... We're just going to do some things so he can he can journal some of his thoughts and prayers. And this is a uh, with a postcard from um, from Sevierville, which is we live in Tennessee, and Sevierville is in Tennessee. And I just thought that kind of made me think of even though that this is not a single person on that rock, you know, it's just uh, it seems like 
a good place to go and be by yourself and be still and pray. So I just thought that was appropriate to stamp that. And also some wood uh, themed scrap paper and scrapbook paper. And then uh, some little poems. And I had a lot of old, um, uh, old faith related items that I could add to this. Uh, but just, and I thought that was neat. That's a, that is a, that is a transfer from Dixie Bell, I think. No, it isn't. That's a transfer that my friend Myra sent me, and it had some churches on it, and that was one of the things on that. So, Amazing Grace, everybody loves that song. Uh, this is some printing that Tammy did. And she's going to do that on her channel, and it's called Rust Printing. That's what she also did up here. And I think that is just absolutely gorgeous. But uh, you'll have to watch her to see how she did that. Look at the other side of it. It bleeds through. So this was the side that she did it on, and then it bleeds through, and look what you get on the other side. So it's just so pretty for scrapbook paper. So, and then I found that little map of Jerusalem, so I thought that was good. And just little places that they can journal. And we're not done with, I don't think we're done with any of these books. Um, except the ones that sh that will be packaged that I'll show you later. But this one I felt like needs something else around the front. I really don't know, but it's going to need some things inside also. But you can make them as simple or as detailed as you want. And I'm going to show you one that's very, very simple. But that one is the prayer journal. And then... So this one is for my sister and her husband because they are tea drinkers. They love their hot teas, so their herbal tea. So we're this one is for them. I'm trying to do this one-handed while I hold my phone. Okay, so this is an herbal tea journal. And you can get girly on this one, even though her husband is going to be... This is going to be for him, too. I just felt like for a tea book, it needed to, needed to look pretty. So, here's some. This is also one of those from that set that Myra sent me. And I'm sorry, my nails are terrible. I've been painting today, and I didn't get to clean them up first. Uh, but, so there's some of the pages on this one. Uh, you can do so many pretty things with a journal like this. And none of these books took very long at all. I think the, the hardest part was Tammy took these home and did some stitching on some of them. I wouldn't attempt to do that, but she does, and it adds so much. So, this one's got a little hang tag in it, and that was just something that, I think that was an old postcard that I found. Yep, it was. And so, that, I thought that was pretty. And then, she made the little corner pocket here. Again, you need to check her channel out because uh, she's going to show you start to finish on a mother's journal. And I think we all need a mother's journal for our kids. I know that when my mother passed, uh, one of the things that she left behind was uh, a journal to all of us kids. And it was just such a blessing to have some of those things written down. She just kind of added some little touches in there, some little vintage touches. Looks like we've done a little bit more to this one. It's not going to need much work to finish, but we're doing... Last year we did, because my mother had just passed, we did a mother's journal for everyone, and we did huge journals because we had so much to go in them that um, it really made the journal very large, and it was a huge undertaking. Now, this is one that was just started, and this is going to be my brother's. He actually likes to write poetry, and so I, all I've done here is put some pages in here and decorate the front and back of the book, or started it. This will get more decoration on the front, and but you can just use simple. I think this is, um, this is like a handmade paper. This is a parchment, not a parchment paper. This is a... Uh, I don't know what kind of paper that is. Maybe some of you will know. But anyway, just different kinds of paper. And this one, I found this, and it was given to me 
by one of my viewers actually that had came by and she got rid of a lot of her scrap material and um, this was in it and I just think that's so pretty. So that might create the theme of this because it's hard to decide with a poem what you want to go with. And it, since I did this wood print, then maybe uh, maybe adding some greenery from um, not so much flowers, but some maybe leaves and things would be a good thing for that one. So there's that. And then uh, this is my brother's and he is a gospel singer. So they are, he's part of a group called Eternal Vision, actually, and they do a lot of traveling. And so this will, uh, this will be where he can write down some of his itinerary and uh, just things like that. So we started with this. My friend uh, gave me this little book. And as you can see, I've put, um, we've decoupaged over the top of what it actually says, Let's Sing. And uh, just to kind of soften that. So that's how we did the cover of that. And we didn't have to do anything with the binding. Except we'll be taking some of these pages out to make room for some pockets and things like that. But this is just the start here. And just got a bunch of old songs. But we've only added tiny bits in here. It doesn't have, we've not gotten far at all with this one I don't think. Let me see if we've done anything on the back. Just very little. So, this one is a long ways from being finished. Okay, this one is for my, actually she's my cousin, but she's an only child and uh, we spent a lot of time with her and we just call her one of the sisters because she's like a sister to me and actually to all of us. Um, but hers is going to be a little prayer journal because, again, she is an avid prayer uh, warrior and this is going to have to have a lot more on the outside. I'm not happy with the look of that yet but look how simple. You don't have to do much of anything. This was just a handmade paper and then so every other one I did with a handmade paper and then and then this paper and then just a handmade paper and uh, and just added some little touches here and there. This was a, a I think that's a um, transfer from Dixie Bell, one of their small transfer sets. And um, so I just kind of put that throughout it. And I think it had the little birds on it too. But look how simple that you can make them. And all we did is just kind of punch a hole in each of those and brought it through to the center and tied it. So that's how simple the binding can be on these. And then, let's see. This is another, we actually have um, another chicken keeper's journal that, uh, that's just one Tammy made. I don't think this one is for an actual family member. So, but that's just another simple one that she did there. But I love the look of the little ones. I think better than, because this is thicker and she put the little feather on there. But that makes a very cute little book. And then, let's see. Here is one that we got started for one of my sisters. And she teaches uh, preschool at my church, actually. And so we're kind of combining school and church. So um, just putting some pictures in there. These are where she can put her children's pictures. These are just my mom here that we just kind of stuck in there because we did that little vellum envelope that you could see through. So, and then there's the church. So all through this, it's gonna have little aspects of church she can, and little aspects of school where she can journal things with her children. She's gotten very attached to those kids. And so um, she can keep up with maybe little things that they say and learn. And again, this one is just one that just kind of started. And uh, that page is sliding, actually. These pages can be very, very simple with this one. We just kind of wrapped it around and tied it. 
That way you can just take them out and put them back in as you need to. Or you could go back through and, and poke holes in it and tidy in if you wanted it to not move around. And then there's one more here, and we were worried about my brother, who all he's interested in is the rod run. And so we thought that was going to be really, really hard. But uh, we found this postcard in my old paper. And look at that. It made just the perfect glue. We didn't have to do anything else to it, just glue it on there. And uh, for we hung some car keys off of it. It just so happens he's a Ford guy, so that worked out. And then we just put some old uh, paper things in here that he can journal what cars he bought, how much he put into them, what he sold them for, the ones that he kept, and all that. And there's a little road map and... Just some little different car, car things, things. But I just thought that was just a really good, make. it will make a really good gift. And some of them may take some time, but very little money at all. So just wanted to share that with you. And I'm going to add a link to her channel um, so that you guys can see start to finish on one of these. I don't have that one here, but it's a mother's journal. And um, I just wanted to share that with you. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.